Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. I'm your host, Pamiksha, and today we're gonna dive deep into the AWS WAF. So, web application firewall has always been like, you know, uh, the go-to security layer and very easy to configure and set up for any new application. Suppose you don't have product security team, you don't have security engineer, you don't have penetration test, but at least what you would do is configure the WAF, right? That would at least help you protect 60, 70% from all the external threats. Now, over the years of configuring and, and looking into like, you know, different WAF, uh, I have some gain hands-on experience on how to configure to optimize the protection while like, you know, providing the not, not compromising with the latency of the application and, and, and maximizing the protection of your application from like, you know, various attacks. So today our, our goal is to go over like, you know, certain uh, real world uh, scenarios and, and then, then the tips on how to use that to configure your, your WAF properly uh, so you get the maximum benefit. All right, so let, let's dive deep into it. All right, so let's start. What is AWS WAF? So uh, forget about the AWS part, but the web application firewall, which is offered by pretty much all the cloud providers and CloudFront and like, you know, there are a lot of players who are, who are providing this nowadays. So this is the firewall built for the application to protect against like, you know, common web, web exploits like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, malicious requests, input violation, et cetera, et cetera. So this acts as an additional security layer that impacts all your incoming requests. And then it also allows you to create the security rules to block the malicious traffic. You can create all sorts of rules and there are multiple like, you know, pre-filled, preset templates, which are also available, which you can configure. So the key feature from the WAF is it allows the rule-based filtering. Like I said, you can define the rule. You have managed rule groups and you also integrate with a lot of services. So all, all the WAF that you see from Azure, GCP or AWS, will allow you to integrate with like, you know, your log groups and a lot of other other systems, which uh, like, you know, your cloud front and entry gateway, API gateway and stuff like that. So it can inspect all the requests and give you the enhanced benefit. Uh, the key thing is it does protect against like, you know, uh, various attacks like SQL injection, access, denial of service, which is quite like in humongous. It also improves the availability of the application, uh, cost effective, right? Compared to all the other, uh, sp specific to WAF, like there are two, two model uh, and, and depending on uh, like the basic one also come with the bot control and then advanced has shield and stuff like that. Then you also have the scalability, flexibility, you have granular access control, and then you can integrate with various services, like I said. So now <clears throat> let's let's dive into the, what is the first, uh, like, you know, uh, thing that you want to do if you are one of the let's say DevOps engineer or you are lead engineer uh, for your product and then you are configuring the application firewall. So the first tip is define your external scope. Now why is that diff difficult or why is like you know why are we even talking about it? Over the years, whenever I have done like, you know, some web application firewall configuration audit, I've seen a lot of time people misses out on, on configuring a lot of external endpoints, which usually should have been configured. Now it does sound very uh, like, you know, uncommon, but it is common. So first thing you want to do, you do not want to leave out any endpoint, which is external facing, but not configured in WAF. So you collect all your external endpoints, IP addresses, whatever the assets that you can, uh, probably imagine for your business you find out everything you can the best way to do it is actually configure some sort of like you know automation so automation in terms of let's say there is a new load balancer created uh, right and then then it's automatically get added to the WAF or you get notified so someone like you know adds to the WAF uh, because imagine like as the infrastructure gets more and more complex uh, there are a lot of people who are managing it uh, it becomes very uh, like you know unmanageable in terms of uh, keeping keeping track of all the assets which are which you have to configure with WAF. Uh, this will ensure that all of your endpoints are protected and and all the rules that you configure applies to everywhere consistently. Uh, so this will prevent like you know unintended blocking of legitimate requests. It will also improve the accuracy and reduce the false positive. So make sure you first identify your scope and, and configure the scope properly in the WAF. That's a tip number one. 
Now tip number two is about splitting your web access control list based on the needs and the goal. Now, uh, if you imagine like in a monolithic ACL, you have like single ACL and under your ACL, you have all the, all the assets posted. Now, what I would suggest rather doing that is you divide your ACL based on the need. Uh, so, for example, like one ACL might have, uh, like, you know, required the, the rule set requirement might be different for each ACL because one is hosting your public infrastructure like marketing website, while the other is hosting your internal infrastructure like a backend and APIs. So, you want to have a two different rules uh, uh, for each ACL. And when you configure in WAF, right, uh, you will define the rules per ACL. So you will have the flexibility of uh, defining the rules uh, individually depending on your need. Uh, where your backend infrastructure requires much greater, like you know, focus on on the exploitation of the APIs, while the external infrastructure is much more uh, uh, prone to like denial of service and that kind of attack. So uh, you can you can define then play around with the rule set uh, based on the ACL. That that would be like you know definitely help you achieve your goal faster. So number three is test test and test uh, I don't know how many times we have emphasized on this one but you do want once you have defined the ACL split it down and then now you're ready to uh, like you know go into production test your ACL and make sure it's not breaking the legitimate request now I'll show you I'll give you an example so one time we had configured the WAF and now there was one endpoint in our application which had like you know uh, data size uh, which is quite larger than all the other requests and that request was being dropped and and fortunately we got to know by from one of the client and they, they said like you know customer they said like they are not able to upload some files or not able to access this endpoint because the request is quite large and it's being dropped by the WAF so and you have configured some rule with the size restriction so make sure when you like you know uh, move to the production or before you move to the production you enable a mode called count mode that's uh, that will allow you to test uh, like you know pass through all the requests but at least see on your dashboard which are the requests being blocked or will be blocked by the WAF if it, if this mode has been disabled and you move to the production so that will give you immense uh, effectiveness of whether your WAF is working as expected so after you define your ACL you want to test it you want to test it as thoroughly as possible to make sure uh, there is a zero legitimate request being blocked like run all your regression tests unit test everything right so that will ensure that uh, yeah uh, first enable on on, on uh, pre-production usually i've seen organization uh, run it in pre-production for at least few weeks to months just to ensure like no no request is being dropped and then once they feel more comfortable they, they enable on the production Next one is you want to store the logs for the AWS WAF traffic. Now, why this is important? So suppose you're, you're, you have moved to the production. Uh, of course, you, you've been getting like millions of requests every day through your application. And all of these logs you want to store somewhere. So essentially, WAF allows you to store these logs into S3, Athena, where you can easily query as well. Uh, and this will allow you later on to go in and analyze the request. So suppose some requests were blocked or, or some requests were like, you know, dropped by the WAF or, or attack was blocked or, or whatever the case, you will at least be able to uh, have the insight onto why uh, this this attack like was blocked by the WAF or, or why this was not blocked by the WAF, which is like, you know, kind of a, uh, something you want to know to in enhance your WAF rules. So this is the importance of, of making sure the logs are stored. Now, what I would also suggest is to keep these logs in a separate account. Uh, you probably know, like from the compliance and security perspective, it's always advisable to keep the logs separately from your all the assets. Uh, so you have two different, like, you know, chain of custody and, and, and access control as well. Another thing is, uh, if you have like retention policy, uh, you want to, let's say you want to keep logs for like two years versus all of your normal account uh, and customer data you want to have for five years. So you can apply two different reten retention policy if you have those accounts separate. So uh, and then lastly, as I said, like you can always query with Athena and stuff and then learn more about your application traffic. And based on that, you can enhance the 
the uh, like you know traffic and the rules uh, that's configured in the WAF. So the next one is uh, analyze the and monitor uh, after you enable the WAF. So once you have the WAF enabled, you want to review the logs for suspicious activities. So take an example uh, where uh, one of the attacker has gained access to your EC2 instance, and now they are using the EC2 to perform other abusive access either to your uh, environment, to other assets that you have within your environment, or maybe launch attacks on some other uh, uh, like you know businesses. And distributed denial of service is classic example of this, right? This is how it works. Now, if you don't analyze this traffic, you won't realize that your uh, your system is being abused. Uh, and and once you once you find it out, you can obviously block that. But then also you can report it to the community as well. And and that way, like you know, uh, AWS security and the other teams also be more vigilant about this uh, this sort of activities. So this will help you not just like you know uh, manage your expense on the cloud provider, uh, but then also uh, help you understand like if there are any internal threats going on within the environment. So make sure you always like you know analyze and monitor the activities uh, after enabling the WAF. Uh, I've always been fan of like you know seeing more alerts and notifications rather than missing out on some critical events. So uh, my suggestion here is try to configure as many alerts as possible. Uh, you can do this with, with using like, you know, CloudWatch where you can customize uh, the alarms and metrics. Uh, I'll give you some example. Let's say there is a sudden a rise in number of block requests by WAF. Uh, now, normally you would see, okay, daily 500, thousand and all of a sudden now you saw like three four thousand uh, block requests in uh, in the matter of few minutes or a few hours so you want to gain like you know alert for that uh, second thing you can also see like there is unusual traffic pattern which usually you don't see but now so this kind of like you know once you start logging stuff and, and monitoring through the cloud watch you can set up the alarm and, and alerts and which will help like you know your IT security team you can also set up like you know SNS, which uh, and then incident manager, system manager. There are a lot of ways to do that, uh, to look look into and dive deep into the incident if any of this activity does happen. But the first and foremost thing is you want to set up as many alerts as possible to uh, just make sure you are aware of everything uh, and whether the WAF is working as expected or not. Now, rate limiting is uh, like you know quite common one because let's say uh, like whatever the application that I've been pen testing lately, uh, rate limiting is the very common factor that I've seen uh, that's been missing. Now, with the rate limit, uh, it's it's really interesting how you configure it, right? Because it will help you mitigate denial of service and and like you know some burst of requests through your login endpoint or sign up or uh, forget password, whatever the public endpoint or maybe non-public endpoints too. Uh, but at least you will be able to limit those uh, malformed and abuse requests. At the same time, you also want to put it in a way that you're not blocking the legitimate users and 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 fine tune like you know the threshold uh, that that should work for your customers as well as for the attackers uh, to to block them. Uh, so you, this is sort of like a trial and error exercise. I always like to start with like, you know, the basic one where you can, you can estimate how many customer you have, see how many roughly requests, uh, you've been getting from a given, like, you know, user in a matter of minute or, or uh, five minutes. And then you, uh, probably, uh, average that and then configure the rate limit rule. And uh, as you go along, you will be you'll find a way to fine tune it. But this is the most 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 critical rule in the WAF because uh, rate limit will allow you to prevent like you know brute force in all of service this kind of attacks uh, from the external threat actor. So there is a reason uh, like you know we do annual risk assessment. There is a reason that we do annual audits, external audits. Because there is a schedule of because the things changes in our organization over over the year, uh, sometimes over a month as well. So what I would suggest is set a monthly schedule or at least like in a quarterly schedule 
to go back audit your rules and and see if there are any rule new rules introduced by your cloud provider which you can use uh, as well as uh, any new attack vectors that you have seen uh, given like you know adoption of ai you will see a lot of like you know deep fake kind of uh, attacks as well very smart bots as well which will try to bypass some of the rate limiting rules as well so uh, you need to as, and as you develop new and new endpoint you will have new threat landscape so try to get on a schedule uh, for quarterly go go through your rule set see if there are any rules that you want to effectively change or manage or implement and and con reconfigure your WAF and and go through the same cycle like you know, testing in pre-production and then then rolling out to the production that will make sure your your WAF is always uh, on top of the things uh, given like you know how the uh, threats and attacks are, are progressing as well so previously we had ch uh, talked about like you know the aws WAF bot control so uh, the bot control essentially uh, detects and, and limits or blocks the automated bad bot. Uh, I would say bad versus good bot. Uh, the example of the good bot would be uh, your search engine crawlers, right? Uh, to index your page and etc. So those are good bot, but there are bo bad bots who are trying to, let's say, uh, uh, like, you know, send malicious request to your sign up page and and like you know create as many accounts as you want like that's why you have like captcha and stuff like that uh, whenever you are visiting certain website it, it's checking like whether this is coming from uh, bot or not so it's also checking your ip address and reputation of it so if you if you are configured bot correctly uh, you will be able to uh, let legitimate traffic go and bots go but at the same time, you will block a lot of bad bots. Uh, of course, like, you know, saving a lot of uh, uh, latency and the bandwidth on your application as well. So uh, just like how you do with the rules, get on a schedule, uh, configure, like use the WAF bot, bot control first. And once you have it configured, regular review and fine tune it as you go along. Uh, this will make sure to protect against like you know uh, scraping attack and and like you know all the bot related threats like denial of service brute force malicious uh, requests malicious uh, uh, like you know use cases uh, for the login and and sign up and all the public endpoints including your marketing website like contact us form and etc so definitely do that so uh, just to pretty much close this down uh, the conclusion is WAF is a very powerful tool not i'm not talking about specific to aws but web application firewall in general is very powerful as i said like if you are just launching a product or you have no budget for security team or penetration testing i would at least recommend to enable the WAF following the tips that we have just discussed and if you properly configure and test and and do the ongoing monitoring i'm i'm absolutely sure that you will minimize uh, the attack on your applications by 70 to 80 percent and uh, just keep continuing this uh, as the threat and landscape evolving uh, and and with the recent ai uh, ai attacks and a uh, lot of like you know uh, pen testers and, and attackers are also using a lot of ai tools so make sure you be vigilant about uh, how your WAF is uh, uh, capturing the traffic and, and keep analyzing it and, and make sure your teams are getting alerted. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning into this session. Uh, I hope you like it. If you have any other tips that you have used for your organization and you liked it, uh, please, please uh, drop it down in the comment section. It will help me and, and our community to learn as well. If you have any other questions, please reach out. I'll, I'll try my best to get back to you. Uh, if nothing else, then I'll see you in the next session. Thank you so much.